everyone, Dr. Mike here. Let's take a look at the hormones that are produced by the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland and what they do. So you've got the hypothalamus stimulating the anterior pituitary gland to release a whole bunch of hormones such as thyroid stimulating hormone, prolactin, follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, adrenocorticotropic hormone and growth hormone. It does it because the hypothalamus produces hormones itself that travels down this blood supply and stimulates it. Let's have a look at these hormones separately. So the first one that's produced, or that we're gonna talk about, is that of thyroid stimulating hormone. So it stimulates the thyroid. Thyroid is located at the anterior portion of our trachea in our neck, and the thyroid produces, with the help of iodine, which is a chemical, or I should say an element of the periodic table, it produces T3, T4. The number there tells you how many iodine molecules are attached. So T3 and T4 are the active thyroid hormones, T3 is the most predominant one. You'll find that T4 gets turned into T3 most of the time. And what role does T3 and T4 play? It's an important role in metabolism, okay? So if you actually have too much of this thyroid hormone, it can result in an overactive metabolism. So these individuals tend to lose weight, get hot easily, sweat a lot. And those people who have an underactive thyroid tend to hold on to weight more often. If we have a look at prolactin that's released by the anterior pituitary gland, prolactin actually stimulates milk production, okay? So remember, oxytocin from the posterior pituitary gland is there for milk ejection. Prolactin is there for milk production. When we have a look at FSH and LH, known as the gonadotropins, the gonadotropins are gonna act on the gonads. Now, if we look at the male testes, follicle-stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone together help produce testosterone. And if we look at the ovaries, what you'll find is follicle-stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone stimulate the production of estrogen and progesterone. In actual fact, they're named after what they do in the female reproductive system. So follicle stimulating hormone actually stimulates the follicles to, be, to begin their cycle at the beginning of every menstrual cycle. Okay, so the follicles that start to turn and mature from a primary follicle into a secondary follicle and so forth because of follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, lutein means yellow, luteinizing hormone means what it does is at the end of these follicles being produced, it ejects the egg from the ovary. That's what luteinizing hormone does, but all because it modulates the effects of estrogen and progesterone. If we then look at ACTH, which is adrenocorticotropic hormone, adreno means the adrenal gland, cortico means the outside aspect of the uh, adrenal gland called the cortex, and tropic tells you it's now stimulating another gland to release a hormone. So adrenocorticotropic hormone stimulates the cortex of the adrenal gland to release mineralocorticoids and glucocorticoids. Now the mineralocorticoids predominantly is aldosterone. Aldosterone helps us reabsorb sodium into the body. If we reabsorb sodium into the body, water will always follow. Remember that, anytime you eat something salty, you get thirsty. So anywhere sodium goes in the body, water will follow. That's why if you have too much salt in the blood, water goes into the blood, blood pressure goes up, okay? Now why would we, would we want to stimulate the release of aldosterone, which stimulates sodium retention? Well, we do it in times of stress when we need to raise our blood pressure, okay? And glucocorticoids, gluco tells you its role in playing around with glucose levels. And predominantly, what we're talking about here is cortisol. So cortisol plays an important role with releasing glucose into the bloodstream so that our body can utilize this as energy, but also plays another role in regards to growth, development, and so forth. All right, what about growth hormone? So growth hormone can do a couple of things. Predominantly, it stimulates muscles and bones to grow. It can stimulate the liver to release something called IGF-1, which is insulin-like growth factor. And this has a very strong role on muscle growth as well. So these are the predominant hormones that are released from the anterior pituitary gland.